week, um, we went through several scriptures talking about purpose and gaining understanding of um, how God uses our the situations in our lives, the things that we go through, the things that we endure to help us to be prepared for our purpose. But we really hunkered down and, and focused on the fact that God hides us so that the enemy cannot snuff us out or kill us or take us out prior to us fulfilling our purpose in life. Amen. And so we started off, um, we went to chapter two of Exodus and we read through verse three and it says, and there went a man of the house of Levi and took to a wife, a daughter of Levi. And we wrapped around that for a minute because they were both of the house of Levi. So they were like kissing cousins. Yeah. And the woman <laughs> and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it in the slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. All right, and we stopped right there. Who can tell me some of the things that we discussed on last week? Let's kind of recap for those who weren't here last week. What were some of the things that we hit? The fact that our parents will hide us because when you have a child, you can look at them and you can see certain things about them that lets you know that they're a good kid, that they're actually going to be something. And so you stand in to try to protect that child so that bad people in the neighborhood can't get to them so that they can't get lost in the shuffle with the crowd and whatever it is that they're doing at the time. You fight to make sure that that child is taken care of, but they're hidden. You don't let them go to all the parties, right? We don't let them hang out with the bad group. We make sure that they are around positive people doing positive things and headed in a certain direction. Even if we know that there's something that um, maybe they have in their mind, they're going to be a doctor, they're going to be a nurse, they're going to be a hairdresser, whatever it is. We even go as far as to try to find people who are operating in that profession so that they can see and have an understanding of what it is, right? But we hide them. We don't just put them out there just because we recognize that there is a call on their life. We're talking about purpose. And so being hidden, we talked about how there was someone else in the Bible who was hidden when they were born because their purpose was revealed when they were a child. Now, remember, our mantra is what? I am born on purpose, for a purpose, and with a purpose, right? So if we're born with purpose, God set us here. And you must believe that something is always trying to come against the purpose from the very beginning. So whether it's the fact that your parents couldn't get along and now you battle abandonment, that is coming against your purpose. The fact that maybe you were supposed to be a girl and you turned out to be a boy and you felt rejected because your father wanted a boy instead or whatever, uh, you're battling with that. You know what I mean? So that, that comes against your purpose. These are things that people battle as they get old. It shows up on the playground. When you're not cho chosen for the team, I can tell you now, I was not good at sports. Now I could run. You put me on a track and field, I could run, and I could run forever. I was one of those long-legged little girls that could just, just go forever. And it, it wasn't a big deal to me. I wasn't the one that could do the short distances, but you put me on there and I just go. But if you tried to put me in dodgeball, I was always the last one because I could duck the ball, but I couldn't throw the ball. So I would have to keep trying to throw to uh, get somebody out so I could get people in who could throw the ball. But I was good at ducking. Why? Because I could fight. I knew how to bob and weave, right? 
but I was never chosen for the sports. I was always the last one chosen when it would come to dodgeball, when it would come to softball, I was afraid of the ball, the ball would come and I would go. <laughs> I did. They would throw the, um, try to pass a basketball to me and I would move and the ball would go to the other team. It just didn't work out for me. But that sets up something inside of a child when they're never chosen, even though they know it's not what their purpose to do. Isn't that something? Even though you know it's not something that God set inside of you, that God uh, gave you to do, to be a part of. So these are the things that we actually battle. And so as parents, we hide our children. Now, as a pastor, a shepherd, that is the same thing as being a parent. I would be considered your mother in the Lord. Amen? And so I can see and identify your giftings. I can see when you're moving in the prophetic. I can see when a person has um, an apostolic call on them. I can see it like that. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to automatically put you out there. Be why? Because I've been through some stuff. And I know that there is a real devil who wants to take out your real life. Who wants to put you on blast, jack you up, exploit your weaknesses, and make God, watch this, look like a dummy. Make God look like a failure. This is the enemy of God that we are at war with, the enemy of our soul that we are at war with every day of our life. So we talked about Jesus and how Joseph learned of Jesus' greatness in Matthew 1, 18 through 25. He learned of Jesus' greatness. And then after he learned of it, God told him to hide the child. The Magi came. Because Herod, the one who was seeking after Jesus, said, hey, so, so everybody's supposed to worship him? Yeah. All right, go find him. And when you find him, come back and let me know. Check this out. How is it that the Magi knew God enough? Do you know what Magi are? Does anyone know what a Magi is? What are the Magi? Astrologers. They sure are. They were astrologers. They studied stars, which is where we get our horoscopes and stuff from. Horrible scopes, as I call it, right? How is it that the ones who were apart from God knew more about God's word than God's people? And then when they were told to let the king know, they heard from God, and God said, don't you go back there. And guess what? They obeyed. Their purpose was to go take a company. And if you do the research on it, you'll actually find it wasn't just three of them. It was a company of them that all went and worshipped him. There was a full-fledged church service right there. They went and worshipped the Lord. And these are people who did not know God. They studied stars. Isn't that something? But they knew enough that they did not go back and they did not tell King Herod. So that's when King Herod put out the decree to kill all of the kids that were two and up. Okay? So he put that same edict out that uh, Pharaoh did. And that's how Moses ends up in the water, in the night. Amen? So we learned from that. Since nobody seems to remember what we talked about except for Misha. I, oh. I didn't see you raise your hand. <laughs> okay, Shanae had something to share. Go ahead. You said uh, last week how God will God will have a purpose for you, and even if even when He knows you're gonna be scared ahead of time, He'll still make a way for you to complete your purpose. Like when Joseph was scared and he didn't do what God told him to do, He still made a way and to yeah. fulfill His purpose. Amen. Good job, Shanae. Anyone else? Did anyone else get anything from last week's Bible study? Yeah, I think I did. Well, I know I did because I got to think about some things that have happened to me over my life. Because when I was two, I had to rush to the hospital because I had a hernia that had to go bigger. Mm -hmm. And once I got over that, I was four, and my grandmother's house caught on fire, and she was trying to get all of us out. I was really sure she had everybody out, but she kept trying to go in to get us all out, but she did have us all out. 
And when I was 16, I flew the first time ever in my life, and I actually missed the flight that I was supposed to connect with in Chicago. And by the time they got a bus back to uh, Boston, I found out that the plane had crashed. Mm. So I know I'm here for a purpose. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And how many of us have that testimony where God has physically kept us? Mm -hmm. You think about Moses. Moses was in the Nile. What's in the Nile River? Crocodiles. How is it that Moses was in bull rushing and pitch? So some sticks with some stuff to make it hold together. Floating around because mom could not stand to allow them to come in and kill her job. She couldn't sit there and watch it. Remember, we read about um, in the Psalms about how um, the, the women would wail and cry because their children were no more. And, and so here, she could not do it. So she, instead, she's like, I have to put you in this water and just pray that God gives you the safety. And guess what? God did it. God protected Moses. And we'll see that after we start reading again um, in verse 4. But one of the things that I want to hit on about God hiding us. Because recently, um, I've been reading, has anyone been following the story about John Gray? Anybody online been following what's going on with John Gray? John Gray is, oh, yes. I'm sorry, go ahead, Trina. I have a little bit. Okay. So John Gray is a pastor of a mega church. Uh, the name of his church is Relentless. And John Gray took over uh, Ron Carpenter's old church in Greenville. So everybody knows how large that church was. Now, John Gray used to be under Joel Osteen as assistant pastor. Now, I've been trying to research and find out how long he was under uh, Joel Osteen for five years. Five and a half years. <laughs> He was under Joel Olsen, five and a half. How long of that was assistant pastor? Do you know? No, off the top of my head. Huh? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, so being with him, now here this man out of nowhere blows up. Now, if you listen to him preach, he's one of those people, as we're talking about when you have purpose and God hides you. Um, he's one of those preachers, when you listen to him preach, he's so engaging. Um, he's not one of them hardcore preachers, but you're going to walk away knowing the word of God. You're going to understand some of the history and you are going to laugh your face off because he's going to make faces and, and he's very animated in his preaching style. He's very charismatic. Um, last year, so he started Relentless. What amazes me about it is he was under Joel Olsen. He gets a call from Ron Carpenter, leaves Joel Osteen's church, starts his church, and all hell breaks loose. He starts in 2018. He gets busted, cheating on his wife, has to do a public confession and apology to everybody. Now, I'm telling you, this man is cold. If you ever go and listen to his words, I mean, he's cold. He can preach. But here's the deal. When he got caught and his wife said, okay, I'm not going to do away with you. We're going to work through this. You've got some issues from when you were a kid. She stands up and she confesses in front of the congregation. I'm going to stand behind him. This woman got a hold of the young man who was wounded. And when she got a hold of him as a young man, it drew him into an affair. She said, but I'm going to stand with my husband. And I mean, she preached that thing like nobody's business. He goes and buys her a Lamborghini, a $200,000 car. And of course, what do you think happened? The entire world goes crazy. Why did they go crazy over that? We're talking about being hidden, okay? I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. God hiding us. So the whole world goes crazy. 
The blogs are blowing up. It's all over the news. He bought a $200,000 car. Now, number one, you just got busted cheap. Number two, that's your way of paying for your sin, buying her a $200,000 car. Number three, but, you my tithes and offerings. But also in there, he had some issues with his church when he first started. They were saying that he wasn't paying the bills either. So okay. that was another portion. We hadn't even got to that part. That's, that's 2019. He was in 2018 with the first issue. So he buys this Lamborghini. Then him and Ron Carpenter are fighting now. They're fighting because he's not paying his rent. He don't own the building. Ron Carpenter owns that building. Ron Carpenter moved to uh, California to uh, another mega church that plant took another over. mega church. Took over. Okay. So then, guess what? Your boy gets caught cheating again here, not too long ago. We're talking about being hidden. I want to look at the scripture. Um, our theme scripture for this year is 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. You got to understand how all of this happened. So the first thing that you got to recognize is this, everybody. When God calls you, when he calls you, he is literally going to work out the mess inside of you prior to employing you. Now, it doesn't mean that you're perfect. But the minor stuff, we should have majored in the minor stuff before we take a platform. Are you with me? Adultery should not still be on the table when you have taken a platform. Lying, cheating, stealing should not still be on the table. You've got to clean this stuff up before you operate in purpose before you go out on purpose to operate in your purpose. You gotta clean some stuff up. You can't still be battling lower level devils because when you take a platform like that, the amount of people that is at his church could be considered a small nation. At least a tribe at, at, at the least, right? So if you're leading that many people, you shouldn't still be getting caught up in that type of stuff. You should have that stuff work out of you before you step into that position. And this is where we mess up because what we do is somebody says you sang a good song, we done booked a whole bus and next minute you know we on the, we on the road. We singing at every church. You praise that so well, the anointing is all over you. Next minute you know you're booked at every church in the state. And let me tell you what happened. We had a member who everyone could see the anointing on his life. He was ministering everywhere and wasn't saying anything. Wasn't telling us. We wasn't covering him. We don't know if he was fasting. We don't know what was happening. All of a sudden during service one day, he stands up. And he looks like he's playing a piano with his eyes closed. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Come to find out, he had picked up a devil the night before when he was ministering at another church. I don't know who laid hands on him or what happened, but he was running around to all these different churches ministering. Somebody ministered the wrong thing to him. Bless him with her. I'm talking about staying in. You don't let everybody just come laying hands on you. You can pray for me without having to touch me. And when you get ready to touch me, you best believe I've already trained most of our people. You're binding up anything that they could try to transfer. You can't even touch me. What was that? <laughs> so we're talking about remaining hidden. Remaining hidden. We don't want to jump out 
run into a pulpit and get beat up. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. It says, but we all with open faces, behold, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So the first thing that we've got to recognize is this. We are going, um, let me restate that. We are being converted. Look up the word converted for me. Pull up Webster's Dictionary, 1828, dictionary.com, Edamul online, all of y'all use your resources. I want to hear what the definitions are for converting. Having been adopted to be suitable for a new purpose. Amen. Having been adapted to be suitable for a new purpose. What does it mean to be adapted? What does it mean to be adapted? Suitable to make, uh, it's to make suitable to make to correspond. Fit it. Okay. You, you gotta use your big throw horse. Mm -hmm. It's to make suitable to make to correspond to fit or suit to proportion. Okay. Let's look at what Webster says. Can everybody see that? All right, he's going to pop it on. Let's break this down. Going from glory to glory means we are being converted. So it means to change or turn into another substance or form. So the example is from water into ice. So if we're going from glory to glory, glory is the manifested presence of God. Amen? So he's taking us from one representation of himself to another representation of himself. But understand, we don't just go forward. We go forward and up, forward and up, forward and up. We are being changed so that we are literally looking as in a mirror. Jesus Christ looking back at himself. With every step that we take in this walk, every change that we make, conversion means to change, to turn. What are we turning from? Our wicked ways. Turning to Christ our King. But not just turning to, but turning into. Uh-oh, did y'all catch that? We are turning into Him. Remember, if He is in us, and he said, greater works shall you do. That means as we progress in this thing, the more of our flesh that dies, the greater we're going to become, the more we're going to look like him. Jesus couldn't do the greatest part of his ministry until what? His flesh died. The greatest part of his ministry was when he went to hell and he took the keys and gave us access toward the veil where we no longer had to go before a man to get to our God. Now we've got access to the South, just like he does. If you look at John 15, I'm gonna read that for you. Um, O.C. is working with the kids, so I'm just gonna read it, bear with me. Nope, you're all right. Um, and I actually, stay with me. 17, John 17, starting at verse 1. 
Now, Jesus had just spoken to them about, um, in John 15, about him being the vine. His father is the vine, they are the branches. But then when you go to 17, it says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Okay? Verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God. And know that word know is an intimate word. That is actually like becoming one together. That they may might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, I could really go into this. We talked about this in our Shamar class. Because the way that Jesus flips back and forth between his sovereignty and his humanity is amazing if you listen to what Jesus is saying. The mere fact that he is speaking of himself in the third person lets you know he's speaking about his humanity and his sovereignty. Because remember, his kingdom is in heaven. I know that that's just mind-blowing because it is for me. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory, the manifested presence, which I had with thee before the world was. So again, talking about his sovereignty. That's very deep. He's like, can I get my body back? Exactly. Can, can I get my status back? Because Jesus thought it not robbery to leave heaven and come to earth. We sing the song but don't understand what it really means. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. In order for him to come from heaven down to earth, he had to demote himself, take on a human body so that he could live like we did. But check this, be the example for each and every one of us. He showed us that it's possible because you gotta understand, he could have called down a legion of angels and wiped out all of them that was coming against them. Why? Because he's God. But he didn't, he remained human. He stayed human to complete the job. Why? Because it goes back to Genesis. Let us make man and let them have what? Domain. We're waiting on God to do something in the earth. My God. Guess what? He's waiting on us. He gave us dominion. The Bible said, that the heaven, even the heavens, belong to God. But the earth has he given to who? The son of man. We sit not talking about God do this, God do that. We're talking about purpose. We wait on God to do everything. And he's like, I gave you the dominion. Once you accept me as your Lord and Savior, You now are inhabited by the greatest power in the cosmic world. The great, did he, did y'all get that? Did you catch that? I, does, I mean, does that not like, I don't know, for me, that make me do the little chicken dance that they be doing in them churches. Right there? Whoa, yes. So I think about the analogy of growing up when I was given different tasks to do. And I wanted to give it up to my dad. And my dad's like, no, I told you to do it. Woo. So it is your job to do it. Now, as my dad, he's like, I will coach you from sidelines how to do it. And I will remind you on what should be done. But I told you to put the hands to the lawnmower and cut the grass. Wow. I told you to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. I told you to do it. It is mm -hmm. on you because that is your responsibility. I showed you for so many years. Now it's you, it's your turn. Regardless, and realize how we give kids assignments when they're nine and ten years old. In that so home. they grow into us when they leave our house and make their own home. They got mm -hmm. skills to go with. And and this is so important because we're again waiting on God to do it for us. When God is saying, "I've already showed you," how do we know that He's already showed us? All you got to do is read Your Word. He showed us. 
Look at our own, here, let, let me read it for you. Matthew. Pay, pay attention, y'all, this, this is some good stuff. This is good stuff. It's that good, good, right? Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Wait, does that mean something bad? Because Shanae started laughing too. Yeah. It does, it means something yeah. bad. Don't, don't, say say, that. don't say that, don't say that. I want to know what it means. Um, just, all right, I'll tell you later. What's your right. name? Matthew, right. Matthew 28, verse 9. Yeah, because Shanae started snickering. I'm like, oh, yeah. she got to use a, a, a term that must be bad. Yeah. That's like listening to all of these preachers say, go ham. And at least I found out what I'm like, well, what does ham mean? Ham is some meat. What does that mean? Go meat it on them? I mean, what are we doing? No, it means hard as a mug. So, you know, yeah, I probably should have asked what good good means. All right, now, all right, so Matthew 28, I repent. Matthew 28, starting at verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus is letting them know, I am the most powerful in the cosmos. All power, not some, but all. All means all. In the Greek, in the Hebrew, in the Spanish, it doesn't matter. It all means everything. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, come on, this is what O.C. was talking about, whatsoever I, commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. So what Jesus is telling us and what we are founded upon is the mere fact that he is saying, I have shown you, now you have learned, you studied under me. O.C. said, my father showed me how to cut the grass and then told me, do what you saw me do. This is what Jesus is telling us here. But we over here praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, if you would come and do this and do that, and God is saying, no, everything I did on earth was done through what? A man or a woman. A woman is a man with a womb. Womb man. Ain't that something? A womb man. Okay? That's exactly what it means. A man with a womb. God went from the earth, created man, and when he created woman, he went inside the man and pulled her out. Hello, somebody. Making us equal. He pulled the woman from the man's side. He didn't pull her out of a foot bone to be trampled over top of. He also didn't pull her out of his head. She ain't above him. He is her cover. So what we've got to understand is while we're waiting on God to do something, he's waiting on us to do. But in order to get it done, we must be converted. We must be changed. We must be transformed. We read Romans 12, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But do you understand what that means? What are you converting your mind to? What have you changed into from the day that you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you still battling lower level devils? Are you still getting caught up in adultery? Are you still lying? Are you still blowing your money? You still scared to let God, trust God with a time. But you want him to let millions pass through your hand. But you can't trust him with 10%. What are you converting Two, the Bible says, and be not conformed to this world. You got to understand, the kingdom is read completely different than the world systems are. But guess what? If all power was given to Jesus Christ after the cross, all power, he finished the work he said. If we go back to uh, John 17, I'm on my phone, I got four different Bibles going. 
But we ain't even going to go there. Builds character. Amen? He said he had finished the work. John 17. And I have glorified thee on the earth. I got it on my phone. It's good. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now, we're talking about being hidden. Notice what Jesus said in verse 40. I have finished. It is done. What Jesus was to do in the earth was complete. What has God given you to do? And have you completed your work? Or will you be caught with your work undone? How many of us have got to the place where it's Jesus or bus? It's God or bus? It's kingdom or bus? We, we literally have to get to that mind. We've got to convert ourselves from having this flashy lifestyle. We want to be here. We want to be there. And I'm not saying anything bad about having a vacation because I take them. Y'all going to see us in Jamaica. Y'all going to see us in Jamaica next year. Lord willing, if the Lord tarries, we will be there. Guess what? That doesn't mean that I'm blowing my tithe money. I still take care of God's business first. Whatever it is that he is telling me to do, I complete that task. Are you derelict of your duties? What is it that you're, if you're a husband and you are gallivanting in the streets, you're derelict of your duties. If you are a parent and the kids don't know where you are half the time until you come stumbling back into the house, you're derelict of your duties. What is it that God has given you to do? Because if you're not doing it, you need to remain hidden until you've got all that mess worked out. Why? Because situations like John Gray's, I'm not going to say people, situations like John Gray's is causing the world to question the very God that we serve. Again, Jesus said, all power has been given to who? Me. In heaven and in earth. He has all the power. Where does he live? Greater is who? Oh my. That, that's where? Oh my. Did y'all catch that? Did anybody catch? I just felt it catch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did y'all catch that? Do you understand the greatness that's on the inside of you? We backing these devils down, baby, because enough is enough. It's time to get in position and to move. Ye are a God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you. I pray that's resonating in someone's heart right now. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Now when you think about that, your mindset should start to transform. It should begin to convert. It should begin to change to help you to understand when I'm saying you are unstoppable, you are unblockable, you are unshakable. Why? Because you're connected to the Holy Ghost. He gives you wisdom. He comforts you, right? This is what Holy Ghost does. Holy Ghost is a person. Right? He's the third person of, Jesus, of uh, the God here. The Trinity. But you have the great one. You have greatness that lies within you. While that greatness is in you, understand he will always shed light on your insecurities. Whatever the enemy would use to exploit you to pull you off your path, to stop you from moving forward, the weaker areas that are in you. But you have to understand that where I'm weak, he's strong. He is a very present help in times of trouble. So as he begins to work these things out of 
us, closing all of those doors. This way, when we step into purpose, after the hiding period is over, after the um, being in the cocoon is over, the metamorphosis happens. A whole bunch of work is happening inside of a cocoon that nobody can see. We want to make sure that we're being real with some stuff, that we're not making up stories. Compulsive confessions ain't helping you. We need to stop giving the enemy ammo on how to destroy us. Shut your mouth about all the things that you ain't getting right quite yet. It's true. Because that compulsive confession don't help you. Look at what OC has up. <coughs> Second Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, most gladly. Therefore, I will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, notice that even in this, Paul didn't stay where he was. He didn't make excuses. He continued to fight the good fight of faith to crucify his flesh daily. Daily, he worked to crucify his flesh. And this is where we have to get people of God. As we're in this season of being hidden and not necessarily being the one in the pulpit, deal with your inner me. Yes, we have a real enemy to fight, but deal with your own issues. Because what's going to happen is the devil's going to let you rise to fame. And it's going to be an easy track to get there. That church was literally handed to that man. And look what's happened. Because we're not closing the doors. Because we're not dealing with our stuff. Because we're not being real about the issues that we have. That stuff should have been, you know what? Hey, before we take this, y'all, I'm going to need some accountability partners. Because this is what I'm battling. As his pastor, if I knew that was an issue, I'd have been like, don't take that church. He needs to give that church to somebody else. Can I say one thing? Yeah. <coughs> Everybody knows the story about um, Ron Carpenter and his wife. They, Talk about it. Um, if he was having those issues um, before he got there, he should have already knew what was going on previous administration yep. that the pastor had problems with his wife she doing what him. she did. Yep. So he did not release or they didn't purify the demons that were already in there. Mm -hmm. So he should have had whoever the old angels were that was released. over the house, he should have had those angels be released and have the new ones come in, take the place and cover the new house. And you have to understand that angels have assignments. You guys go back to my teachings on angels. Every angel has an assignment. There is something they're responsible to do. So when we got here, um, I will never forget people coming to me saying, man, the worship is so different. I don't know what's going on. Something's weird. We're not, we, when we were at that other church, we had been there for three years and worship was like high as all get out. But when we got here, it was like an arm wrestle. Get anything to move. And I'll never forget it because we had to fight through that thing. And so Apostle Scott came and he walked back in the children's room and he said, oh my God. And he broke it. He's like, I don't know what went on in here, but it, it's gone now. And so we had to release the assignment of the angels, whether they be demonics or whether they be um, angels that were here that were assigned to Pastor Steve Schroeder. 
But once the changing of the guard happens, the angels that accompany me to do what I'm called to do come here with us. I would love to sit down and really talk to Pastor Steve and find out some history about what happened while he was here. Because I'm willing to bet that we probably fought a lot of that the first year we were here. Because I didn't know that. That's why when I said to you the other day, who you knew back then, she's gone. He's gone. We've learned. We have learned. So we're not going to continue to make the same foolish mistakes we made in the past. Again, from glory to glory. Amen? From glory to glory. That's what we're talking about. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> what is it? Remember, they had a split here, too. Who? Oh, sorry. Pastor Schroeder. Yeah, they did. I forgot about that. So again, we're being changed, converted into what? The same image. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass. That glass, the word glass, is actually a mirror. As beholding in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. This is what he is expecting us to do. We should reflect God. The only way to reflect him. Thank you. The only way to reflect him. Up the amplifier. And we all with an unveiled face. Continually seen as in a mirror. The glory of the Lord are progressively, progressively, progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory. So again, we're not just going forward, we're going forward and up, forward and up, amen, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit, amen. Any questions over anything that we've talked about tonight, comments? or um, revelations. Just recognizing the, the amount of power um, that we have, and even as um, how each of us have kind of evolved, you know, over the years, as I, as I look at myself, you know, how I've grown. Um, I, I look at myself at like a, like a bar chart <laughs> as you, you know, progress, like in the stock market. Yes, it's kind of how we're we're going um, in the church. You know, when I first joined the church to now, like that metamorphosis type stage, we've we've just evolved. So, yeah, that's good. Amen, amen. It's almost like I need to um, talk about the the transition of a butterfly again, so that we can understand. Because I I really think that it, it's it's good to to go back over that. Because it helps us to no, understand. Megan, I just talked about that last week. Wow. So like that's. Oh, so said him week. and Kamika just talked about this last week. That's awesome. I wasn't in their house. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else want to share anything before I seal this with one last scripture? We um, can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I like how. You were talking about being honest with yourself and how you were saying um, that compulsive confessions will not help you in this season in the season of hiding in God mm -hmm. and how you know we just it's because we I was just talking with uh, the praise team and about how we need to start like being honest with ourselves and um, you know making sure that we're being diligent with reading our word and different things like that and not trying to psych ourselves out by saying, Oh, I'm reading our, I'm reading my word, but we're really not, you know, or we're, we're pushing um, that darkness that has been trying to infiltrate our lives, but we're really not, we're, we're welcoming it. So it's just, it's great to hear, you know, just be honest with yourself and stop be, and don't let compulsive confessions rule your life. Amen. That's huge. Because we, we make those compulsive confessions and 
the enemy's like, oh, that's all I got to do to shut them down? Let me keep doing it then. This is working. Let me move on and find somebody who doesn't, you know, respond to what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Some people, we may be the only Bible that they ever get a chance to read. And if we flip flop and wishy wash and back and forth, they're going to think that God is bipolar and will not follow him. You guys are going to get a chance to hear from a young lady this week. And she is going to share how she was snatched from the pits of hell out of the grips of Satan because she went to Satan because the church did not show her the power. We never manifested, and I'm talking about the body of Christ. This baby grew up in church, not only here, but in Texas as well. But she saw all the wickedness. But the devil showed her power. She could tangibly feel it and was going to leave God. But God sent a person in. She's going to share her testimony to show who had really been given all power. Don't miss this, son. You can be in the house, be in the house. We're not going to do a replay on it. It's not going to go online. Okay? Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine, were, thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. So he's talking about the apostles have kept God's word. Are you keeping God's word? Are you keeping your word with God? How many of us say, oh, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to study. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to pray every day about that. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them. We've got to get to the place where we receive the word of God. Remember, Jesus is the word according to John 1. We have to choose to receive it. That is where the conversion comes in. Your flesh fights that word because you don't want to give up what you think is right. You don't want to give up what's easy for you to do. You fight against it. We've got to learn to receive that word. Amen? All right, and then and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Jesus is talking about he left from heaven, he came here. Okay? And God sent him. He was the first apostle. We talk about apostles being sent ones. God sent him here. Now this is the one I need y'all to highlight, underline, make sure that you know it. John 17 and 9. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Uh-oh. Did y'all catch that? We over here praying for all of the world to be saved, and all of them ain't going to be saved. It's not going to happen. We pray for those who are his. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. In other words, I'm about to be up out of here. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given, that they may be one as we are. Underline that. Highlight it. This is conversion. Again, we talk about salvation and sanctification. Salvation happens instantly. Sanctification takes a lifetime. Conversion takes a lifetime. What we are converting to is that we may be one as Jesus and God were one. He said, I don't do nothing unless my father does. I don't speak nothing unless my father says it. So we've got to learn how to be one with our God. Amen? I'm going to stop right there. 
I got some more in the chamber for y'all for next week. Amen. All right. Any questions, comments, revelations? So again, conversion to change or turn into another substance or form. We know that we are changing into, converting into, turning into the form of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not about religion. It's literally about a change of our heart and moral character. From enmity to God and from vicious habits to love of God and to a holy life. Yes, we will be on YouTube, but we're not going to put it on um, on uh, uh, Facebook. We usually, uh, we're going to watch it, but we're not going to post it to the channel. So if you don't catch it live, you're not going to catch it. You're not going to get the replay. Certain one, we're not going to put it on the World Wide Web. So if you need a copy of it um, to watch later, go see OC. Wow, that rhyme, go see OC. Say that five times fast, somebody. Go see OC, go see OC, go see OC, go see OC. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, everybody. Any prayer requests? Amen. <laughs> prayer requests. We covered a lot of ground tonight, guys. See all the scriptures? We covered a lot of ground tonight. Didn't even feel like it, did it? <laughs>